who have come today for the first time that you have actually missed. You know, on day number one, we examined the virtual connections and we saw how uh, the world of today, we cannot avoid uh, connecting virtually because companies are expanding globally, churches are closed in different places, and we see that the only way we can communicate is through virtual connections. And we saw that also when sin entered, we no longer could be able to talk to God face to face and we resorted to virtual uh, connections again. So uh, yesterday we looked at connecting through our dreams and we saw that when people have big dreams, those dreams can keep them and guide them until the other side of the, of, of the, of the, of the world. We took example of Joseph who had a dream when he was very young and that dream kept him until he became the prime minister of a very important nation of Egypt. So we also saw that uh, through dreams, people have come up with different projects and uh, they were able, oh, I think now I can connect and... Uh, can you see anything? It's, it's loading, oh, it's already there. We can see something. There? Yeah. Okay, so I was saying that um, we saw that there is a dream which we can all share and associate with. And that's the dream that we see in Daniel, a dream that God had for his people, a dream that will end every suffering that we go through on this planet Earth. And we saw that if we all get connected through this dream, we can become closer and closer to God, and we may all have the same hope, the hope of glory, the hope of everlasting life. And today, we are looking at a subject called connecting with the wrong guy. So if you have a reason of not being with us tomorrow, please, I want to pray that you cancel it. You know, If you have another appointment, please, tomorrow, don't have it. Because we're going to be, to be looking at the price involved in making the right connection. I don't want anybody to miss out on that very important subject. Then uh, on, on, on Wednesday, we'll be looking at a virtual court session. On December 10th, that's a Thursday, we'll look at a special time for a special person. And then uh, the next day, we'll look at the signs that you cannot uh, ignore. On 13th, you shall be looking at a subject, beware of the dangers of connecting with the wrong woman. December 14th, we shall be looking at, do we need rules in the connections? Then on 15th, we shall be connecting with beloved ones that passed away. On 16th, we look at the return to face-to-face -to -face meetings, and then we shall crown with the longest honeymoon when we celebrate total restoration of relationships. So today, as we are examining this subject of connecting with long guy, and I want to talk to my young people and tell you that we are very vulnerable now more than any other time. We are meeting virtually with people we have never seen. We are talking and chatting with people. We don't know where they come from, what their backgrounds are, and sometimes we get connected and the result may not be so good. So I have to caution any one of us that please, before you engage in any serious connections in these days that we are living in, please do your due diligence correctly because it's very easy to make a wrong connection with a wrong guy. Let me tell you, when the world was created, God created very perfect. And actually after creating everything that would make man happy, he created man in his own image, in the image of God. He created them, he and she. Our forefathers, our parents were so perfect in God's image, so happy with the creation that God had created for them. They enjoyed every bit of it. Every animal in the garden was so good and so kind. They enjoyed every bit of it until one day something happened. Our mother Eve connected with the wrong guy and things started to take another turn. Our sisters, sometimes they often get deceived by men, promising them heaven on earth. Yesterday, actually it was last Sunday, I was with some men and uh, 
a certain gentleman passed by and they started to talk about him. They were telling stories of how he managed to receive a young girl. She was very happy in her prime years, completing her university. And she was expectant. She wanted to get a man who was promising, a man that could make her happy. And there comes this man who was actually not good. He had the money to take people around, but the source of that money was very questionable. He was a thief. He was a cheat and he was getting money through dubious means. And one day, police were looking for this guy. They couldn't get him. He had escaped to Uganda. They said the best way to get him is to get this girl. So they called a girl. She didn't know what was happening. They put her into prison and they put somebody by her so that that person can be close to that girl and get the information where this man is. This poor girl found herself in prison. And here was a, a, a fellow prisoner who had a mission of getting all the information from her. So long before it took so many years, there was a lot of connection, there was a lot of talk, and the gentleman was able to speak to this girl and to reveal to her all the secrets and how she can escape to Kampala. Actually, that's what happened. So the other friend said, well, I can help you to escape the prison. So they mobilized some money and off they went to Kampala to meet this gentleman in a hotel somewhere in Kampala without knowing that's the time they're going to arrest both and put them in prison. Well, they didn't die in prison. They were later uh, offered justice, but he had to serve his prison service for some time. But this poor girl was just a victim of connecting with a wrong guy. We always have to be very careful with people we connect with. And tonight, I want us to see what is this wrong guy that many of us should be very careful to avoid. And this you are going to get from the book of Revelation. As we study the struggle between good and evil, who is this bad guy that we need to be very careful in connecting with? Where did he come from? I'm talking about the devil. When you got the book of Revelation, chapter 12 from verse 7, we're going to read. But before we read, allow me to pray one more time. Almighty Father in heaven, we're going to study a very important subject tonight. We're going to reveal the enemy of our souls. We're going to reveal him, merciful Father, I pray that you may give us your Holy Spirit, that you may be able to understand this devil and his ways and his strategies so that your people who are connected now may know how to avoid connecting with him. Many times he disguises himself as our friend. Many times he comes as a good guy, but when we do due diligence, using your word, we discover that the only thing he can offer is death and destruction. One thank you, God, because you love us so much and you have prepared us tonight that we may be able to listen to your word. So descend now, dear Lord, and speak to your people, I pray in Jesus' name. The Bible says, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels also fought. The devil did not come from anywhere, but the devil came down from heaven. That's where he existed. What did he do? Why did he leave heaven? Why did he have to come down? My brother and my sister, the Bible tells me that he fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a press found for them in heaven any longer. My brother, my sister, the dread dragon was cast out and that serpent of old called devil and Satan who deceives the whole world was cast down because he had sinned. You know, the devil has so many names. There's the devil, 
is Satan, serpent, snake. But different writers and different authors describe him in various ways, but he is still the same, the author of sin. And when he was cast down, he did not come alone, but he came with his angels. Now somebody can ask me, preacher, how on earth did the devil have angels? How did he get them? Let me tell you, they are not his because he created them. Angels were created by God. Because what Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 tells us is that God created everything. Jesus created everything, including the angels. But when they decided to partner with the devil, they became the devil's angels. You know, every time you choose a side to belong to, that's where you belong. If you decide to be on the devil's side, you become a devil's agent, you become a devil's daughter, you become a devil's son. But once you decide to keep on the right side of Jesus Christ, then you are a son of God, a child of the living God. The Bible even tells us how many angels were cast out with him. The Bible tells me that a third of the angels of heaven were cast down on this planet because they had took a wrong side. They chose the long guy. They connected with the long guy. But somebody may ask this question. Why was there war in heaven? Where did this dragon come from? How did it start? What was he doing before? When you go to the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel tells us what the devil was doing before he fell. In Ezekiel 28, from verse 14 to 15 says, you are anointed Chelobi who covers, I established you. You are on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery storms. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created until iniquity was found in you. When you go to Isaiah, he comes with the name of Lucifer, the son of the morning. He was a covering cherubim. Lucifer had great wisdom. He had great beauty that resulted in his fall. He was perfect. What happened to him? Up to today, it's a mystery. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12 continues to say, Thus says the Lord, you are the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You can imagine, you know, um, I always tell people that if there's anybody, if there's anyone that loves beauty, it is God himself. He's surrounded by beauty. Even Lucifer, the one who was supposed to be a covering cherubim, the one who was supposed to defend the law of the kingdom, was perfect in beauty. He was full of wisdom. Every precious stone was his covering. He was a mark workmanship. The pipes was spared in the day that he was created. He was perfect. So my brother, my sister, anytime the devil wants you to think that God created a devil, that God created Satan. Know from now that God never created a devil. He created a perfect being, a perfect angel. If he wanted anything perfect, it was him. But something later happened to him. Let us see verse 17 says, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. Ezekiel, that's what he said. In Isaiah 14, 12, he says, how you are fallen all from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend in heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. This was the problem. This was his problem. Because of his beauty, 
because of his brightness, because of his wisdom, he became proud and pride and self-exaltation caused him to decide that he would be like the most high. You know, um, even as we start about uh, spiritual aspects, we see the same things happening even in, in the normal uh, world. In some countries, some people are elevated to some positions and they reach a point where they feel they can be just like the top of them. And some, some of them have become so proud that they want to be at the same equal footing with him that gave them the position. And once that happens, that is Max, the downfall of such people. My brothers, my sisters, I want you to remember four points that you should go home with, even if you forget everything. One is God loves us. First John chapter four, verse eight, the Bible says, God is love. Number two, we need to remember that God wants our regents through love. He will never force anyone to serve him because his government, its foundation is love and we have to serve him in love by choice. The devil decided that he was not going to serve God. He decided that he won't be like God. Ezekiel 28 verse 6 says, you have set your heart as the heart of a God. And he didn't stop on himself, but he decided to start <laughs> spreading his virus. You know, these days we have been taught how to do social distancing. The angels in heaven would never think that social distancing was necessary, especially when somebody who was corrupting them was the covering cherubim. The devil or Lucifer, his position, he was supposed to be the one defending the law of God. He was supposed to be the one defending the justice of God. He was supposed to be the one telling people how just, how good the government of God was. But here he was trying to sweet talk other angels. His vice spread, it, I may not know how long it took, but he steadily managed to convince one third of the angels in heaven and they followed him. Let me tell you, when such a thing happens, one would ask this question, how would God face Lucifer's challenge? How? You know, God could have had about three options. One was either to destroy Lucifer immediately, so as to protect other beings. Two, he could have chosen to ignore him. Three, he would give him time for the universe to see the results of Lucifer's rebellion. The first two are very tricky because destroying Lucifer immediately might have led to so many other devils arising up in heaven because people do not know that the devil was actually wrong. Especially when he already had a following of people who thought that he could be light. And even ignoring him in heaven would be another one. So this is how our planet became the battleground. That's how he was allowed to do or to carry out his schemes so that people can see what he is able to do and to see and prove for themselves if the devil was right or if God was right. When we go to the book of Genesis, we see what happened. Our first parents, very happy indeed, but one day, Eve as she was in the garden. She looked at the tree that had been 
forbidden. And the devil was near. He started whispering to Eve. Did God really say that you should not eat any tree from the garden? Eve recited the word that God had told her. You may eat any tree, but one, because God told us if we eat it or even touch it, we shall die. And the devil said, no, 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 no. That's not true. You shall not die. That's not true. You shall not die. For God knows that in the day you eat all of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. My brother and my sister, I want to tell you this evening that we must be very careful with anyone, with anybody, whatever the title that convinces you to sin and tells you that it's okay, it's not okay. The devil is a liar. And if, I want you to imagine for one second, this is Eve, who God had created in his image, in the likeness of God. So she was like God. She looked like God. But the devil is so cunning that he took it away from her by promising them a lie. All he wanted was to elevate Eve to feel that she can also occupy the position of God. Sin entered the world like that. And what the devil promised and the results that we see today are different. The whole universe, all created beings, be heavenly beings, be angels, even those that fell with Lucifer, they can see that the devil is a liar. He didn't bring life. He brought death. People dying day and night. People starving to death. We are having different calamities. We have been separated from God because of sin. The devil is a liar. We see a lot of violence in our homes. Some children they can be able to see their parents fighting day and night. And my brother and my sister, the devil is a liar. But let me tell you tonight, Jesus is going to be victorious. And if you avoid connecting with this wrong guy, if you decide to be on the right side, you are also going to enjoy life everlasting. And the problem that we are facing today, we may not continue to face them anymore. Soon and very soon, Jesus is coming to take us home. The devil is a liar. He makes sin look so sweet. He makes sin so attractive, but produces anxiety. It produces fear. It produces suffering and produces death. Somebody asked the question, if God really loves us, why doesn't he do something? Let me tell you, my brother and my sister tonight, that God has already done what he was supposed to do. He allowed his son, Jesus Christ, to leave his home in glory, where angels were worshiping him day and night, bowing prostrate before him, saying, holy, 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 and he left all that and came on this planet earth to be carried by Mary for nine good months in the womb. He was born, he walked the dusty roads of Galilee and Nazareth and all places you can imagine. But he called it all by accepting to die on Calvary. Jesus fulfilled the promise of his father. Jesus promised, fulfilled what God had promised because God could not stand it. He regrets that we are caught as victims of this tyranny. He showed his love by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die for me, to die for you on Calvary. This is why the Bible tells me, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever 
believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. My brother and my sister, Jesus came to show that God is love. Right from the time man sinned, God gave a promise right in the garden. And the promise was from what God told the serpent right there in the garden of Eden. This is where the Bible tells me, and I'll put a limit between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his head. You know, this is the longest messianic prophecy that you can come across. Right at the point when man sinned, Jesus promised a redeemer. Yes, Jesus had to suffer. So some of you who like films, you have seen the film of the Passion of the Christ. Some people say that there is a lot of um, exaggerations in that film, but let me tell you, the suffering that Jesus went through, you cannot be able to imagine. But this was prophesied. He had to suffer. The devil had to bite his heel. But one day, Jesus is going to knock down his head. He died, but he rose again. And we serve a living Savior. In Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3, the Bible tells me, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And that's Jesus Christ. He loved that until the end. What are the strategies and the characteristics of Satan that are revealed in the book of Revelation and other parts of the Bible? When we read Revelation chapter 12, verse 13, the Bible tells me that the devil persecutes God's people. He does not stop there. He deceives them. He is an accuser of the brethren. He puts God's people in prison. He kills and matters God's people. He is very angry with the remnant of God, those who do his will. He is a liar and the father of all lies. Let me tell you, my brother and my sisters, if you are one of those people who just tell lies anyhow, beware. You might be connecting yourself to the wrong guy. His strategies are that. He's a liar and the father of lies. And the thing that he does most is by camouflaging. The Bible tells me that Satan appears as an angel of light. You know, sometimes he can decide to be cruel, but the other time he appears to you as a good guy. I was reading a story of this guy who was given an assignment to do a painting of somebody that looked like Christ and another one that looked like the devil. This young man had uh, an easy way of drawing somebody that looked like Jesus Christ. He met a young man on the street. He looked perfect <laughs> and he was asked, can I draw you? I need your picture. Then I said, why do you want my picture? I said, please, I'm going to give anything you want, but allow me to do a picture because I have an assignment. And if I get this drawing done, I'll get some money out of it. I said, okay, give me something also. So deal, he started drawing him and finished. He gave him his money and he went. He started looking for somebody that looked like the devil, but he failed because every time he approached a person who has a resemblance of somebody so ugly that you could resemble the devil. As soon as the person would smile, things would change. Please be smiling all the time. Go, go. That, that's a good smile. Thank you. Now, he looked for somebody and failed until one day, as he was getting disappointed and he was giving up on the assignment, as he was going home, you know, uh, in Europe, they have these under, underground tunnels. Those of you, you look in Europe and the American world after that. So as I was passing by, somebody called with a very loud voice, please give me something. Oh, the voice was hoarse and threatening. When he turned to look at him, the guy really looked so bad. He says, you know what? 
<laughs> I'm not going to give you little money. I'm going to give you big money, but allow me one thing. I said, uh-huh, what is it? Allow me to draw your face just as you are, and I'll give you the money. I said, okay, go ahead and draw it. So he started drawing and drawing and drawing. And as soon as he finished, when he handed the money, the guy caught his hand. I want to tell me the truth. Why did you want to draw me? He said, look, I was given an assignment to draw two people. One that resembled the devil, another one that resembled Jesus Christ. I had it easy to get somebody who resembled Jesus, but it was very difficult to get somebody that resembled Satan. But tonight, I'm so successful. Now, as he said that, the young man started crying. Then he said, why are you crying? Is it because you look like the devil? He said, no, no, it's not that. It's because I was the first person you drew looking like Jesus. Now I'm drawn again looking like the devil. That's what he does. He has two faces. One face of a good guy, another face of a bad guy. And if we get connected with him, that's what happens to us also. His characters get infused in us very easily. One minute you are Christ, another minute you are the devil. And happens many times in this world. If you connect with the wrong guy, that's what happens. This is why the Bible tells me that even his ministers sometimes appear as ministers of righteousness. So it's not easy to know. You have to do your due diligence if you are to avoid connecting with this wrong guy. Remember, for every Bible teaching, the devil has a counterfeit. And he's so good. And he does miracles to read many people astray. Let me tell you, my brother and my sisters, in the book of Revelation, chapter 16, verse 13 and 14, the Bible says that he saw spirits of devils, spirits like frogs, working miracles. You know, a frog is one of those uh, few creatures that are amazing. You know, when you feed a frog, it may not know it is full. It can burst through feeding. You know, people who have the spirit of frogs always want to amass things. They always want to get more, 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 more. They never get satisfied. Even the devil was never satisfied with his position. He wanted more, 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 more until it was too much. The frog can live on water, can live on land. This is one of the animals that have that capability. They call them amphibians, you know. There are people today, when it comes to church affairs, they are very perfect. When it comes to sin, again, they are very perfect. You can't beat them either way, you know. So those are spirits of frogs, you know, they go out, they make miracles, and people are going to be led astray because of the miracles that are happening today. My brother and my sisters, whenever you see people trying to prove that what they preach is correct by miracles, beware. Because the devil is determined to use miracles to read people astray. How are miracles deceiving God's people? Is it possible? Yes, Matthew 24, 24, it says, if it were possible, they shall deceive even the very elect. God's people are deceived today because of the miracles that the ministers of the enemy are performing. Let me tell my brother and my sisters, if you are not very careful, many people are going to be lost because of these spirits because of the power of the enemy. Do you know that there are some people who on the last day, they will discover too late that they had been deceived. Because in Matthew chapter seven, verse 21, when you go through to 23, it says that on those, during that day, many will come before Jesus and tell him, Jesus, we have been preaching in your word. We have been prophesying in your word. We have performed many miracles in your, in your name. We have driven away demons in your name and jesus will tell them plainly i never knew you so you can imagine through these miracles they are so effective that in the judgment day many will think they are saved yet jesus will tell them they are lost 
We have to be very careful so that we don't connect with the wrong guy. Be very careful. Don't just jump to anything. Not all that glitters is gold. Do your due diligence correctly. The devil is a liar. And sometimes he quotes scripture to lead people astray. This is why I told you when I was studying the subject of how we can connect with God through the Bible, that even the scriptures, you have to study them diligently. Don't jump to one line of scripture and you develop a, a doctrine on that one. No, you have to consult scripture, compare scripture with scripture, a line here, a line there, so that you know the true teaching of the word of God. Don't. The devil can use scriptures as well. He tried them on Jesus Christ himself. Who are you? The only way we can defeat him is by connecting with Jesus Christ. Who is the devil annoyed and angry with in these last days? When you got the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 17 says, the devil is angry with the remnant of God, those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. There are so many teachings today. People will tell you, you know what? The commandments of God are no longer abiding. The law of Jehovah is no longer abiding. We live by grace and grace alone. So when you put aside the commandments of God, okay, you might be connecting with the wrong guy. Let me tell you. Beware of that. He's determined to fight those that keep the commandments of God and those that have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So tonight, I want to challenge us that we need to study carefully and know how we can avoid connecting with this long guy. Point number one, we see it in Isaiah chapter eight, verse 20, where the Bible says, I must check my religion by the law and the testimony. You know, <laughs> this verse, if there's anything that you should have in your head, let it not escape you. Every teaching, every minister, whoever claimed to speak for God, put them to this test. Does that person obey the law of Jehovah? If he doesn't, please, social distancing. Learn away from that person because he might be in trouble. Somebody that does not believe in the spirit of prophecy, that person also, social distancing. Acts chapter 17 verse 11 says, this was about the people of Berea who are comparing scriptures to see if what they are being taught is correct. So don't take everything that you get. You must subject every new teaching to scrutiny with the scriptures. Find if they agree with all other scriptures. Don't take anything. Even me, if I'm preaching to you, get a book, Get a pen, write down what I'm talking about, and when you reach home, study it and verify everything with scriptures so that you can be sure that what you are learning is actually correct. Number three, you must be willing to do what Jesus tells you to do and prove that every doctrine is from God. Number four which is very crucial, is the love of truth. You know, there are people in the world today, they don't care what is true and what is false. I meet so many people who are very educated with degrees, bachelors, masters, PhDs, but you start talking about the truth, they say, ah, 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 I don't have time for that. Okay, so if you don't have time to know what is true and what is false, then, you don't mind whether you take the false because actually you don't know what is true. And people who don't have the love of truth are going to be deceived in these last days because the devil is determined and God will not do anything to protect you if you don't connect with him. 
So my brother and my sisters, tonight I want to challenge all of us that we avoid connecting with the wrong guy. So he is compared with a lowering line because he knows that his time is short. He causes people to panic. He causes people to fear so they don't think right. I always tell people, why do you get you know, so anxious about everything? The devil is so, so cunning. When he says it's a lowering land, when the land roars in the village, everybody starts shaking and has used that strategy too much, using his different strategies. Even this COVID, it's one of the way that he can roar. He gets people disorganized and he attacks those that are weak. My brother, my sister, the devil is so cunning. Somebody may be having this question tonight. Says, I have found myself a victim of the certain deceptions and I found myself in the prison of sin. What can I do? Let me tell my brother and my sister, there is hope in Jesus Christ. There is hope. Because in the book of Hebrews, chapter four, verse 15 and 16, the Bible says, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points Tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus was here. He underwent all the temptations. He was tempted in all ways. He was tempted with food. You know, after he had gone 40 days and nights without food, the first thing the devil tested him with was food. He says, please, these are stones if you are the son of God. Make them bread and eat. We get hungry sometimes. And some of us, when we have... Uh, hunger pains, maybe I've gone without food for one day or two, and you are not fasting. Anything that comes, you want to accept it. Jesus was tempted, but he did not sin. Let me tell you, I don't know what the devil is doing with my screen, you know. <laughs> but because he never sinned, he qualifies to be our redeemer. Because he never sinned, he qualifies to be a perfect sacrifice for your sins and for my sins. Jesus is there to help us. So the Bible says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Jesus Christ is the answer. He was born, he lived on this earth to show the love of his father. And all people that came to him, he never turned away. How about you? He accepts people of all kinds. He accepted me, chief of sinners. He accepted me. He can accept you, my brother, my sister. Jesus is our perfect sacrifice. Jesus is our perfect high priest. He's there in the Holy of Holies. He's breathing your curse. And tonight, I want to invite you that you surrender to him. Because anybody who has found himself a victim of the devil, Jesus is willing and ready to accept you. But I have some other good news for you, is that Satan will soon be destroyed. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 10, tells me that the devil will be thrown in the lake of fire and brimstone. And this fire will burn him to ashes, this fire we destroy him because the Bible tells me in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, that he will be destroyed by my Lord Jesus Christ. He will be disarmed completely. And the Bible tells me in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 19, that he shall never be anymore. There will be no more Satan when he's finally destroyed. My brother, my sister, what a wonderful good news to you and me, that one day the devil will be destroyed and we shall live with God forever and ever. The question tonight, how can we defeat the devil? Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 gives us the secret. We can defeat the devil 
by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So whatever God has done for us, if we commit ourselves to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and accept to be led by the Holy Spirit and commit to die for the truth, even if heavens fall, being willing to die rather than knowingly dishonor God, you are going to become an overcomer. In the light of Jesus' master's love, let me tell you, and his blessed invitation in Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, where God says, come and drink. Whoever is thirsty, come. How many tonight would wish to connect with Jesus Christ? And if you are willing to do that, I want you to ask Jesus to come and control your life. Are you willing to tell to Jesus that you want to bear his testimony to others, to bear the testimony of his love and his power? Are you one of the people who are willing to consider your relationship with Jesus a matter of life and death? Are you willing tonight to say, Jesus, I want to connect with you. I want to say, Jesus, you created me in your image, in your likeness, but the devil came and took away the glory from me. Because the Bible says, all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. This is why Jesus had to come. He came in his human flesh. He came and took our human flesh, our sinful bodies. He lived his life in our body. He defeated in our body, but he was hanged on a tree and they could not find any reason of hanging him, but they did. You know, that night, he went from one courtroom to another from Caiaphas to Herodi, back and forth. They looked for a reason to kill him, but there was nothing until Pilate decided to do what he did not believe himself. For fear of the Jews, for fear of what the Romans are likely to do, he decided to prosecute Jesus. Innocent as he was, but it was because of my sin and your sin. After fulfilling what the Lord demanded, he died and went to heaven. And now he is our high priest, standing before the Father, pleading your case and my case, and my brother and my sister tonight, if by any reason you connect with the wrong guy and you want to make a bow turn, I want to plead with you that you kneel down where you are with me and we seek the Lord in prayer so that he can in our lives. I want us to kneel down as we pray to our mighty God so that he can intervene, so that he can loosen us from the bondage of sin. Let us pray, my brother and my sister, wherever you are, you want to surrender to Jesus, kneel down and pray. Our oh, Father in heaven, I want to thank you so much for revealing to us who is this one guy that we need to be aware of. You have revealed to us his secrets, but above all, Lord, you have revealed to us your love. You have shown us that you love us. You don't only love us, but you love yourself, and your government is just founded on that principle of love. You proved that one when you were sinners, when you were far from you, when you didn't know you, you decided to come and die for us on Calvary. The devil had thought had taken this world. But Jesus, you left your home in glory and you came to die for a sinner man. And after dying, Lord, you ascended to heaven. And there you are pleading the case of every sinner. Mighty God, I want to pray for the young people tonight. All of us, my Father, that are calling upon you tonight. Lord, you want to lose our connections. Lord, you want to break our connection with the devil. And want to plead with you, Father, that we may connect with only Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. 
who is the source of life, who is the source of eternal life. Oh, Lord God, we want to thank you so much for tonight. And I want to pray that you embrace your people that came tonight. Every person listening now, Lord, I pronounce a blessing upon them. Give them good health. Give them power to overcome the enemy. And for tonight, Lord, I want to pray that you may bless each one of us. Even as we end the meetings tonight, continue to speak to each one of us and help us, dear Father, to bring a visitor tomorrow, to share this word with somebody and bring them tomorrow, King of Kings, so that we can continue to learn what you have prepared for us within these weeks of spiritual emphasis. Glory and honor belong to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.